Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, car crashes into house in Salem. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Nissan Rogue Sport, now with available Nissan Intelligent Mobility Technologies, like automatic emergency braking. Now on the Nissan Rogue family, now's the time to save with exclusive offers like this. In tonight, the Salem Fire Department says a car has crashed into a home on South Policy Street. That road is closed. No injuries have been reported there tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Police shot at responding to domestic incident. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. champions we are passionate about your care when people see only despair in the opiate crisis we see tremendous hope people come to us for substance abuse treatment from all different backgrounds federal furnace road in plymouth uh we're just after 6 p.m tonight police responded to a domestic call and a 36 year old man opened fire on officers this happened at 6 22 that white house just beyond the trees uh, police did return fire the police chief and district attorney described the tense exchange just moments ago. Stepped out of the residence and immediately began firing in the direction at the officers. The officers returned fire. Uh, subject was struck and is being treated at a hospital in Boston as we speak. Now, the police chief says seven officers were involved. None of them were injured. Uh, one of those officers was a female officer, I can tell you. All seven are currently at a local hospital being checked out uh, just for stress and other, uh, related injur or other related issues, not injuries. No one is wounded. Uh, neighbors tell me that this started as an altercation. The man and his wife were fighting, apparently. They have a history of some issues. Uh, he did uh, open fire, apparently, on her car as she took off uh, to try to go get help. She called 911 one according to uh to witnesses here they also tell us then about a dozen or rather a half dozen officers quickly swooped in here again we know now that the, that the number was seven guns drawn uh witnesses here tell me they heard police yelling at the man get down get down before they opened fire but uh quite a few gunshots were heard and right now state police have uh come to, to the scene uh they will start this investigation to look into exactly what transpired here okay and there you go on that video and that report we will keep you updated if we get new information into our newsroom. Armed and dangerous. FBI offers 20000 for information leading to arrest of John Williams. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8, Maine. Love this company, very proud of what I do and what we do here as a team. It dates back to Maine heritage and just working hard. And we have a lot of really good people ready to go and willing to do anything and hard working. No. Uh, uh, I want to start by thanking the community for their overwhelming support during this investigation. Throughout the day, we have received truckloads of food and beverages, as well as logistical and emotional support. This has allowed us to continuously work towards the apprehension of the, of the man that killed Corporal Eugene Cole. At this time of this briefing, uh, John Williams uh, is still at large and still considered armed and dangerous. I repeat what I said this morning and reaffirm my comment. 
if John Williams is hearing this, I want you to turn yourself in. Uh, please surrender peacefully. An update, uh, we have been partner partnering with the FBI and other federal agencies during this investigation. Uh, a few minutes ago, uh, a $20,000 re reward has been announced for information uh, leading to the arrest of John Williams. I appreciate the FBI's involvement and hope that the reward offer will encourage someone to come forward and provide us uh, the information that we need to apprehend uh, John Williams. We continue to focus our efforts uh, searching in this local area, uh, and these efforts continue as we speak. And I want to assure the citizens of Somerset County uh, that there will be a greater police presence this evening. And as I emphasized last night, if you hear or see anything, please call 911. Thank you. So I, I can't get into that. Uh, that all is part of the investigation. And that was uh, John Williams' girlfriend? There was a relationship there. Okay. She is currently being, uh, she is currently in the Somerset County Jail. And has she been detected as to where John might be? So we, we've done uh, copious amounts of interviews, and I can't get into the spe specifics of those interviews. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel would like to uh, take some we'll interesting questions here in a minute. Colonel? In, in uh, you know, as we Okay, and there you go on some of that. Um, press conference they had early today, yesterday. If you want to watch that full press conference, we will share the link with you on the Radley King Network Facebook page. Apple, Samsung, and a lot of of their investors are probably watching today's Korean summit. North Korea and South Korea are on the voyage of an historic moment and it matters for tech companies and their investors far beyond the peninsula. Kim Jong-un crosses DMZ line for a historic meeting with South Korea. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Ernest Malafsman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Roxy Sugar, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This, this is me. 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 This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Hey everyone, good morning from South Korea. On an historic day for this country, I'm Terry Moran with ABC News, here with Juhi Cho, my colleague. On this day when there is a summit between the leaders of the two Koreas. This has only happened a couple of times before. Kim Jong-un, his first real appearance yes. on the world yes. stage as far as our audience yes. is concerned. And right now we're already seeing a pre South Korean President Moon Jae-in walking towards the uh, South Korean part of the building. It's called the Peace House and we will see North Korean leader Kim Jong-un walking out from the other side of the right. DMZ very soon. Let's set the scene. We are here at the press center. We're outside the DMZ, in between Seoul, the capital of South Korea, and the demilitarized zone, where this summit is happening. Uh, a very dramatic moment is about to happen. Kim Jong-un is going to cross what they call the military demarcation line. Yes. It's, it's a de facto border, but not a real border, because there was no treaty right. uh, between the two yes. Koreas. The so Korean it's a war ended with an armistice, not a treaty. Right. So it's yes. a ceasefire line. Yes. That's where they exactly. said, 
and so he will cross over that, and this is a historic first as well. Yes, this is the first time ever that a North Korean leader is setting foot on South Korean soil, and I think most of the South Koreans here and North Koreans are in joy, whether you're left wing or right wing, it doesn't matter. For all Koreans, this is a very historic moment. Well, let's talk about that right now, this sense uh, that South Koreans and North Koreans, but certainly South Koreans, have been living under the shadow of this mounting fear that there was going to be war. We have President Trump talking about fire and fury uh, and, yes. and the rhetoric that's coming from the North Koreans. And now all of a sudden, really in a matter of weeks, we have this, this spinning like a top turnaround. What's the feeling among South Koreans that first their leader is meeting with Kim Jong-un and then it seems President Trump and Kim Jong-un are going to sit down? <laughs> okay, and there you go on some of that video and that report. If you want to watch that whole video, we will share the link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today. And I'll have a news report in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.